What up, y'all? Today, I want to talk a little bit about the Summit Game Fest 2024 and pretty much talk about the lackluster presentation that was given for the event. Now, there were a bunch of new games that weren't previously announced during the Game Fest, but there were also a bunch of things that were previously established. They already have the back end, the marketing behind it, as well as a bunch of other games that were previously on other consoles that are now coming out, or not consoles, but other platforms now coming out on other consoles and, and that whole entire thing. Now, here, I want to talk a little bit about the games that are coming out a little bit. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you i had to go through the list again as you can see on my screen i, I knew that a harry potter quidditch champ well a quidditch game was coming out not necessarily quidditch champ but we knew about that when they mentioned hogwarts legacy that there wouldn't be a quidditch and then there were rumors about a standalone quidditch game coming out and it was finally presented here which I thought it looks cool, but at the same time, it didn't look better than the one we got on the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube back in the day. But it could just be me. Another one that I particularly have an interest in was Star Wars Outlaws, which I think has the potential of being good. But at the same time, it's Ubisoft, and Ubisoft could muck it up in some way, shape, or form. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that they don't. Normally when they delve outside of like their own template design patterns, it they actually produced some good work. They just released Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown this year. I thought that was pretty dope. When they made Immortal Phoenix Rising, I thought that was a pretty great game. So when they delve outside of their traditional formula, or let's just say their traditional games like the Tom Clancy games or the Assassin's Creed game, Ubisoft can produce something of quality, in my opinion. So I'm curious to see how Outlaws is going to turn out, but at the same time, I'm not going to hold my breath. I did like this game a lot. It's made by the developer of... Uh, Greece. Metaphor Fanta uh, Refantasio. I will stand on this hill. I will die on this hill. I do think that developers do not need to explain their game to the public. Show, don't tell me about your game. Show me your game. Let me let my eyes do the work. If it looks impressive, I'm gonna like your game. If it if you're talking, if you're barring me down, if you're just telling me. Well, yeah, you know, we have a new system and that new system is called archetypes. And with the archetypes, you know, <laughs> you can create 45 different ways for your character to interact. I'm just going to look at you like you stupid and be like, well, this is just a persona system. You're just calling it a different thing. And I think that's my major thing. Just don't talk, just show your stuff. Don't even get on the stage, just show your stuff. And dip out. I think the showcase would have been a lot, or at least the Game Fest would have been a lot better if all of that wasn't necessarily involved, like the sort of showmanship of it all for them to pitch, you know, the gamers the game as opposed to letting the trailer do most of the talking for them. Again, it, it's one of those cases. The game itself, it looks great. It looks like a spinoff of Persona slash the Shim uh, Shinigami Tensei or Shimigami Shimigumi Tensei series. So I think it looks dope. I think Batman Arkham Shadow is a slap in the face to every Arkham fan out there. <laughs> if you are an Arkham fan, you I feel sorry for you. If I could give you a hug, I would. But the fact that they came out with Suicide Squad previously, and I have no beef against Suicide Squad, but the fandom does. And and that's the whole point. That That's the optic right there. If your fandom has an issue with the previous game that you created, then it's up to you to try to appease your fan. Instead of coming out with like some sort of you know, game for either PC, uh, PS5, Xbox Series X, and S. Instead, you create something that's for VR, which is a very niche market at that. And then on top of that, there aren't that many great games in VR. Like, I think I can count on one hand how many great games I've played on VR. If, if not great, just passable. I do think that that's a, a slap in the face. And I believe this was in the talks for a while. It was rumored for a while at least, and then to finally see it released. Plus, it had no gameplay footage, so you don't know how much motion is actually going to be involved with it, which kind of sucks because in that case, if you pick up the game and you don't really know how it plays. I took a look at this game. Um, it looked good, but it also had that FPS jank to it that reminded me of uh, Operation Flashpoint from back in the day. I don't think it was Red Dragon that I'm thinking of. I think it was the very first Operation Flashpoint that came out on Xbox 360. The other thing was with the Blumhouse games, basically, you know, having their own publishing house, you know, for, for gaming. The one thing that I want people to keep in mind, right, especially if you're a big fan of horror games, this is Blumhouse. 
Blumhouse does not blow the bank for no project. Not a one. They're cheap. Keep that in mind. As you could tell, they showed one high fidelity game. Just one. You don't even know how that's going to play because they got that out the way so quick and put that pixel art farm simulator drain on screen so got that going fast that you couldn't even peek all the way. And then they showcased the, the games that kind of looked like, you know, look like the puppet combo games that would come out every now and then where it showcased like a PS1 aesthetic to it, that old retro vibe and all that they're, they're probably going to be like more so in that wheelhouse just a more can't say high class because puppet combo has that style like down to a t but it's going to be pretty much like that and i don't i hope people don't get their hopes up because they see like a big like publishing studio that was previously a big directing house i think is what you would call it in film but you know someone that was big in the horror space for movies i hope that people don't think that they're go that's going to translate over over to this because you could be highly creative <laughs> When it comes to films, when you're being cheap with games, you can, but it's going to cost you in some departments. I did really like this Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, Reader, Reader's Rewind one. Oh my God, it reminded me of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time Part 4. I need this in my life. That, that looked fantastic. This one kind of had me scratching my head a little bit. The the slitter head. I don't know why. I know it's made by like uh the, the creative mind of Silent Hill too. But bro, like, come on. <laughs> I, I don't even know what I was looking at most of the time. Like, they out here shooting blood guns and using blood swords and daggers and all that. They chopping off limbs, Spider-Man popping everywhere. It just didn't make sense to me. This is the game that I'm about to download the demo to this on the PS5. The gameplay looked fantastic. The, the mass swap, which swaps out your weapons and everything. I was feeling it, especially because I just got, well, not just got, but I beat like Tales of Kinsera like last month or something like that. And I had a blast playing that game. So for this, I'm hoping that it's like more upscaled version of that where Dance dancing plays a big part in the combat system. And I'm just hoping that the gameplay is phenomenal. I don't care about the story. Don't care about anything else about it. Just want the gameplay to be top notch. The finals didn't care. They could have left that out. And I think that was the major thing about it. Like the DLC announcements, the season three announcements for things. The this game is now coming to console announcements, which is something that the, the developer themselves could have had posted to their own website. And then from their website, site you know some of the journalists could have just went pulled that information put it up on x and then did their own videos for it on youtube all of that could have been done in that type of manner which is the norm now you didn't have to reveal that in an event like the summit games fest for that now granted they could have paid for the slot which i'm not sure how all of these things get a, get a place but it was just odd to me because it seemed like something that was entirely unnecessary. I don't think they needed to showcase Power Worlds expansion, Valorant's expansion, New Worlds expansion, or not Valorant's expansion, but Valorant's release coming to the consoles. I don't think they needed to do that. Uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations, thought was pretty dope. And Phantom Blade Zero, I thought it deserved more time, but it didn't get it. And now that I went through everything, right, which probably took a bit of time, my whole thing is is that this Summer Games Fest was completely underwhelming. And the reason why it was underwhelming was because of what was decided to be showcased. Players far and wide have expressed their discontent with looter shooters. Now, granted, you could say, well, that's just on the internet. No, it's in the sales as well. It's in the sales, it's in player retention. It's it's everywhere. If, if you need a number, the number is out there somewhere. <laughs> they don't want it anymore. As for this, I believe the this game right here would be good for, you know, streaming communities or YouTube communities. And as for the rest, the stuff that I'm excited for, like I've been new about, except this one. Th Actually, I think I knew about this one because he showcased it at the Game Awards last year and I wrote it down. But most of the stuff I knew about that, I, that I'm excited for and I don't think any new ground was broken. The main thing that I really want to hammer home is that mainly like these festival type of events like E3 of the past, Summer Games Fest. Gamescom, events like those, right? They're normally used to help the casual gaming audience see what's new coming out, what's gonna be the bi biggest and best shiny toy that you could possibly pick up, pop into your console, or play on your PC and have a blast with. This showcase in particular, it didn't really give anyone that, I don't think, in the casual audience. The hardcore audience, you got enough. You got Black Myth Wukong. You got Warhammer 40K. But here's the thing. If you're hardcore, you already knew those was coming. So what did you really get out of it? And that, I think that's just my biggest point when it comes to all of this. There wasn't anything 
of substance that was revealed. And if something was revealed that could have potentially been of substance, AKA Batman Arkham Shadow, I'm looking at you, you can't really do anything with it. You know what I mean? And I guess that's all I really wanted to say about all of this. Summer Games Fest 2024 was a little bit disappointing and hopefully Gamescom will be better. But other than that, y'all take care. I'm out.